Hi, uh, my name is Stedman Shu, and I'll be giving my talk on machine learning. Uh, in particular, K means clustering. So what exactly is machine learning? Now, some of you might immediately think of Skynet, but luckily for us, AI hasn't advanced that far, at least not yet. So machine learning is actually a type of artificial intelligence, and it provides computers with the capability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Basically, it is able to learn on its own and make a prediction based on a given data set. Now, some examples of machine learning are robotics, drug design, text and speech recognition, and even Netflix and Amazon recommendations. At the core of machine learning, there lies many different types of algorithms. These algorithms can be classified into three categories. Supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement machine learning. Now, supervised machine learning uh, revolves around a given data that has already been assigned a certain value. It then searches for patterns and is then able to make predictions for future data. Some examples of supervised machine learning are stock market forecasting as well as text recognition. Now, unsupervised machine learning is a given data that has no assigned labels. Uh, the purpose of unsupervised machine learning is to organize the data into cluster groups. And this cluster, these clusters, you can then use it to uh, identify the structure of the data for future data analysis. So some examples of this would be uh, Google's autocomplete. Now, reinforced machine learning um, is you have a set of data, and each set of data, um, an action is chosen. And afterwards, uh, the machine is then rewarded based on the action that they took. So with this, the algorithm, algorithm is allowed to learn and try to achieve the best reward. Uh, so this is very commonly used in robotics. So I will be, I will be talking specifically about the k-means clustering algorithm. Uh, it is one of the most commonly utilized unsupervised learning machine, unsupervised learning algorithms. It is iterative and non-deterministic, and it groups a set of data into clusters based on a predetermined uh, number of clusters k. So here um, you can see that there is uh, each point is a set of data, and um, using running the algorithm, it's able to cluster the data uh, based on uh, which groups are more uh, related to one another. So some examples of k-means clustering. You've got Wikipedia articles. So for example, if you search Wikipedia for an apple, uh, you might get all sorts of different apples. You have the apple fruit, you have apple records, uh, and you have companies, Apple. So um, by using the k-means um, clustering algorithm, it's able to divide them into uh, different categories. So you'll get a cluster of fruit categories fruit articles, a cluster of uh, music articles, a cluster of company articles. Uh, it's also very popularly used in search engines uh, like Yahoo and Google. Um, basically, if you make a search query, uh, it, can tr it will try to cluster that search query with the results and try to find the most desired result. So if you have a, a really good algorithm, um, it's more likely that you'll get your desired result on the very first page. Now for data research, um, it's also very important because it will be able to cluster uh, the useful and unuseful data. That way you don't have to uh, spend a lot of time filtering through large quantities of data. Now, the methodology, methodology behind the k-means clustering algorithm, um, first you're given a certain data set. So over here in this picture, you can see that we have six data points. Uh, from there, you choose a number of clusters you want to implement, so k number of clusters, which in here you can see is three, uh, a, b, and c. Uh, and then you initialize the clusters by picking random points as the centroids of those clusters. So a, b, and c we're picking at random, and they are the centroids of the clusters. Step two, you want to assign the data points to its nearest centroid. So you want to assign it based on distance and proximity. Um, so you can see here that A, B, and C, the initial centroids that were chosen in step one, you then, for Z1, Z2, and Z3, because it's closest in proximity to A, it'll be assigned to A, and so on for B, and so on for C. So right now we have three clusters um, with different points uh, assigned to that centroid. Now, finally, for step three, you want to update the centroids. So initially the centroids were uh, chosen at random, but now uh, that we have points assigned to it, we can now update the centroid. Uh, the centroid is basically the mean of all the data points associated with that cluster. 
So you can see that uh, for A, it shifted over. Uh, B, it shifted over. And C, it shifted over to be the centroid of those um, datas. Now, the algorithm itself is very iterative. Um, so it'll, you'll want to keep repeating steps two and three. So now that we have chosen, uh, now, now that we have updated the centroid, we want to reassign the data points. So um, w since the centroid has been moved, you want to uh, reassign the data points, the ones that are closest to the centroid. So you have new, completely new different clusters. Uh, and you'll cont after that, you'll continue to update the centroid with those new data points. So basically steps two and three over and over again. And finally, um, convergence will occur. So convergence occurs when the centroids no longer move and the data points no longer shift in between centroids. So my next slide will be an example of the algorithm being applied to a data set. And hopefully, that will clarify uh, the iterative process. So right here, you can see that uh, the k number of clusters here are four. Um, four points were chosen initially at random. And then points are, the data points are assigned based on proximity to that centroid. Uh, as the data points are assigned, the centroids continue to move based on the data, so, the data points assigned to it, and so on and so on. So finally, when it converges, you'll see that the centroid no longer moves, and the data points no longer shift between the clusters. So you can see here that the results seem pretty accurate. Um, you have four uh, pretty well-determined clusters. Now, in order to accurately determine the structure of the data set, it's pretty important to choose a good k uh, clusters. So how do you determine that? So a good k, unfortunately, um, one of the ways is trial and error. If you pick a k that is too small, it will have too large of an average distance to the centroid. If you pick a k that is too big, uh, there will be a little improvement in average distance from the previous k's. So one method to choose a good k value is called the elbow method. So here you can see that uh, the bottom, it's, there's a plot. It plots the number of clusters k to um, the average distance to the centroid. So initially, at the beginning, you can see that it drops drastically. Uh, but eventually, it begins to level out and it shows very minimal improvement. So at that point, um, it is called the elbow point. The elbow point is considered to be a very good k because it has a low average distance uh, without having too high of a k value. It is also very important to pick a good centroid. Uh, by picking a good centroid, you'll save a lot of computing time and uh, as well as a lot of resources. Um, and you'll also increase your chances of finding the right cluster. If you pick an uh, uh, initial centroid that is too far off, um, it might, the algorithm might never converge. Some of the approaches to pick the right clusters uh, involve other clustering algorithms, which unfortunately I won't be able to touch upon today. Uh, but one approach that people do use is to pick a dispersed set of initial centroid points. So this means that you might pick the first point at random, and then your second point, you would want to pick a point that is farthest away from that initial point, and so on and so forth. By choosing a good k, and picking the right initial centroids, uh, the k-means clustering algorithm will provide accurate clusters from data set, from data set resulting in a very good tool for data analysis. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a better understanding of how clustering algorithms work to define structure and allow for uh, better data analysis. I've also provided some resources uh, that I found very helpful. Uh, here are the first two links. Uh, they provide a very good explanation for all sorts of different learning, learning, mach machine learning algorithms. Uh, there are many out there. Um, the second one actually provides the top 10 commonly used ones. Uh, the last link I found to be extremely useful. It's actually a blog of a guy who um, created the learning algorithms in JavaScript. So that he provides a very good explanation of how they work and how you can uh, translate them into JavaScript. Thank you very much.